Not everybody at once. <laughs> I mean, it's day two. So I mean, just well, what's been a, been a focus you know, for you in the offense and training? Oh, it's, it's like it always is. Fundamentals, right? Um, you know, uh, the fundamentals at each position uh, is so critical. The building blocks of a successful play start there. Great fundamentals. You know, spend a lot of time, you know, establishing the core values there, the core principles of what those fundamentals are at each position, and then transitioning to, you know, plugging those into the full team concept, whether it be pass game or run game. So fundamentals, um, timing, rhythm and timing in the passing game, um, formation recognition, you know, signals, getting in and out of the huddle, huddling up, all that good stuff. Is there something from either the spring or maybe you know, limited time this summer that you're trying to maybe build off of in these first couple of days? Yeah, just in general. Just, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it's, I, I see it as a continuation, you know, like even though we're kind of starting over uh, with install and starting from ground, you know, from, from the first installs and the very basic building blocks as the offense, you know, we, we had 15 days and a lot of practices of learning. And so I'm trying to, you know, kind of blend kind of a hybrid, you know, approach as far as uh, be mindful starting over, but yet kind of picking up where we left off uh, to challenge these guys from a learning cu- curve because it, it's a quick turnaround for the first game. So we have a lot to get in, a lot to get better at, a lot to, re- to refine and to teach before we're game ready. Brett kind of talked about the personalities of your, your two top quarterbacks, Arden and Tommy. But how are they different in, in your mind? How are they similar? Well, I mean, I think they're similar in the fact that, you know, they, they, uh, they've played football, they've played in a lot of games, they work at their craft, they're talented. You know, obviously they're from the same state and that's been made a big deal uh, about. And I think that, you know, I think, to, I think it's, you know, I think they have fun with it, you know, but they're their own person, you know. Uh, and it's, you know, shoot, you know, Chase and Sidney Brown are their own person, you know. So just because you're from the same state doesn't mean that you're, you know, real similar. But for, so those are the similarities. And then when you talk about the differences, I mean, I think just, you know, personality wise, they're a little bit different. Art's kind of a, you know, uh, I don't know, he's outspoken and, you know, kind of bold and strong and, uh, and all those in a positive way. And, and not that Tommy's not, but Tommy's a little bit more, you know, laid back and relational and, and Art's very relational too. So I don't know, I, without getting too much into it, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, we probably need to take a personality test to figure out if they're type, <laughs> type, type A or type B. My wife would put them on the, what is that, the Enneo, Enneagram spectrum, you know, yeah. uh, a one or a seven. She's always telling me I, I can't remember what number I am. I think I'm a four. But Coach, can you just uh, comment on the quarterback room in general? Do you like how it's coming together? And you know, not just for this year, but for future seasons. I do. I do. I like. I like where we're going there. I like the the additions to the room uh, that we've had since you know um, since we started since spring was over. You know, so we have right now we have three new faces. You know, um, and so all th- all three of those guys are. And then Art's kind of a fourth face to a certain degree because he's on the field, you know, and that's a whole different deal than him standing back there. So, yes, I think I think that has been positive. I think, um, you know, the guys are very engaged. And, you know, we're all, we're, you got to have depth at quarterback. you got to have guys, you got to have competition, you got to have, you know, people there. And, and I feel good about who we got there and, and how we're building that forward. You've and, seen Donovan Leary all of two days mm-hmm. now. So what, what's his skill set? Uh, he's just kind of – I would say he's very balanced, you know. Uh, just as just as a player, not necessarily meaning his you know his, his equilibrium, but just you know um, you kind of what he brings to the table. He's got a lot. He's got a lot of polish. He's you know very fundamentally sound. And uh, but you know there's a, there's a lot to I mean a whole lot to learn. And uh, but he's he's very eager for that. One of the better uh, one of the better you know incoming freshmen um, ones I've been around before from a standpoint of his uh, eagerness and wanting and his willingness to learn and soak up information. Uh, he's a sponge in that regard, and that'll really go a long way for his, you know, development. Kirk going to a really interesting story, of mm-hmm. course. But what did you see out of him in his one big year of high school, and and now that he's getting back into the sport? What's that coming back to it like? Well, I think I see I see on the field kind of what I saw when you know I didn't see him play in high school in his senior year, but um, you know I, I I think he's a guy that belongs here. You know, uh, I think and and to what that looks like and what the long term result of that will de- I think depend on a lot of factors, but most notably him and his development and his you know, desire to, to learn and grow and be a sponge. But he's been a great addition, I think. I mean, you could tell – one thing about him is – and him and Donovan, too, like when they get in there as a freshman, like he's – you know, he, he, you can tell he's operated before at a high level. And even though it's been high school, he's been in there and, and you know, and like I shoot, shoot today, I think he's told me, like, I think probably like 45,000 people in a state championship <laughs> game, you know. So that's, that, that's, that's uh, experience, and that's a good thing. So a uh, lo- lo- long ways to go for him, but there is some talent and some tools there that – that I think, uh, you know, us, for sure we welcome here and we're certainly glad he's with us. You didn't mention the arm, the arm talent of those two guys. Is that 
Can they make all the throws? They can throw it. Mm -hmm. They can throw it. There's no doubt. Who are the new faces at wide receiver, especially the Cody Case and Jonah Morris, kind of bring to that room and to your offense? Uh, I think experience, you know, uh, they, you know, they've had a lot of game experiences. They've been in a lot of different offenses and they're very, you know, they're very different and even maybe probably their roles to some degree, but you know, and who they are and what type of receiver they are. But, you know, I think that we were intentional about trying to, you know, look for people that could supplement maybe from an experience and maturity standpoint, not that our guys are immature by any means, but we're just kind of a young group overall. And so I think that was, those were good additions for us to help supplement, you know, just our maturity in the room overall. How nice were those summer practices? You know, I know you had spring ball to come in, but you never had that before in the summer with those guys. Yeah, I, it was great. I mean, it, and I thought we had a good balance in how we approached it. And so you can, you know, the continuation of, you know, the spring, you know, back in the day, back in the day, you know, my day or whatever, uh, you know, two days, the reason you did two days is, uh, you know, because once you were done with spring ball, you didn't see them for like three months, you know? So like, you're like, you get them on campus and you're like, uh, we got we got four weeks to practice. We better practice hard, and you know, well, matter, matter of fact, let's practice twice. You know, and some guys three times. You know, I think that's probably where that started somewhere along the line. And it's so the rules have shifted a little bit. You know, not only do we get the 15 practices, we get some time with them on our hands. Uh, you know, to develop and train them in the summer. So there's a continuation here. I'm not saying two days aren't needed or whatever that we'd love to have them, but we would. But the rules have made it such that that works really paramount and it helps your continuation of learning. So there's a more continuous flow of the learning instruction when you get, when you get to fall camp. Does that help you? I mean, you feel like you're further along. Than oh yeah, it certainly doesn't that? hurt. Right. I mean, there's no way that that's a negative. And so I do think it's helped us. Uh, I think that was noticeable yesterday. And we're in a unique place where there can be a guy like Paucho who's in his sixth year of college football and maybe unique to him six years as a starter likely just, What's the value in that, especially with the you bring in five freshman offensive linemen too? Yeah, I mean, what an influence, you know. And it's and it's not just him, but his story in particular. I mean, you know, Pilstrom too. I mean, he's a pretty experienced guy. He pales in comparison to Pouch, but you know, you know who doesn't, you know? And um, yeah, I mean, he, you know, it's a, it's phenomenal to think. It's really phenomenal to think about the games he's played in. And he called me. He, he uh, we talked at the walk after the walkthrough last night, and he was telling me about a, a play that they had some success with or just, you know, and he was like, and back in 2016, you know, or 17, we ran a play and I was thinking, wait a minute, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, he was here, you know, that seemed like a long time ago. And, and so that would kind of, it was a reminder to me that he's been around a minute, seen a lot. Uh, but we're over there last night doing a walkthrough and his, his time's up. He's not going, the next group's going and he's over there walking through the walkthrough, you know, and his approach is infectious. And, and, and it trickles not just through his position, it permeates to the organization of the unit, you know, the offensive unit. And that's the kind of leadership you need. I'm excited about him. What is his, what is his approach? It seems pretty aggressive at times. Him? Yeah. Well, he loves to play football. I mean, you can't, you can't get in there and bang around for however many games he's played without loving it, you know? And then having the opportunity to, you know, come back, you know, shows you how much he loves this place, his teammates, and the game. And uh, so he's just, you know, he's just a grinder. He's a tough guy. And uh, he's, he, he's got it under control, and that's that's a really a positive thing. Are you pleased with the level of buy-in that you, you've been able to get from the guys just since you've been here in the spring and then now two days into the fall? Yeah, un undoubtedly. I mean, uh, you know, it starts at the top. Uh, and I knew enough about Coach to, knew, you know, to know when I came here, you know, what um, – you know, what I'd be walking into from a cultural standpoint. I mean, I knew, you know, and I knew that the players would respect him and, uh, and the staff that he had around him. And so um, that, that's always a great thing as a coordinator because I'm just a subcategory of that, right? I mean, I'm just, I'm a reflection of him and you know, the, the offensive players are a reflection of me through him, you know, and so the, the, the vertical alignment there, um, that, that covering that he provides as a leader, you know, helps it, it roll downhill naturally for those guys to listen and trust. And uh, I've, been, I've been blown away, been super thrilled with that uh, all the way up to this point. And I'm really expecting that to continue forward through the season. As a first year coach, it, it seems like um, the more you get to know these players and this team and all the other coaches, that your, your confidence in this offense seems to, to grow. Is that, is that an accurate read? Mine that? personally? Yes. Well, I mean, I, I, I do have confidence in, in, in what we're doing uh, and how we're doing it and who we're doing it with, you know. Uh, that, you know, listen, there's, I tell the players this today. I mean, listen, there's no, there's no perfect coach. There, um, there's no perfect player. It's, a, it's an imperfect game coached by imperfect people, played by imperfect. You know, there, so there's going to be flaws. There's going to be mistakes. There's going to be on all levels, you know. And it's our job to try to purge as much as that as you can 
and uh, the mistakes on my behalf, on their behalf, and get together where we play clean football and let them use the abilities they have. And there's plenty, I think there's plenty there for us to go out and put together a good offense with. Got a long ways to go to get there, though. You know, we're not there yet. But, you know, I think with the work and the talent and, you know, as we keep grinding every day, I mean, that's, that's our goal, and uh, that's what we're working towards. Casey Washington said something interesting to Josh yesterday. He's like, guys, you realize we're still pretty predicated on running the ball. He, he, he would seem like he plays a position that would value, his value might be in how many times he touches it or how many times you know, he gets, you know, yeah. targets, and it doesn't feel like he operates that way. Well, there's your reflection of the culture, right? I mean, like, he knows what we're about, and he knows the baseline of what we're trying to accomplish, you know? Um, that's our goal, you know, is to run the ball and, and, and to be able to, to be able to have success running the ball because it makes everything else better, right? It makes the matchups for him one on one on the perimeter. But it, and he knows it takes all all groups to run it. It's not just the O line. It's not just the backs. It's all eleven guys on the field, and uh, that's really refreshing to hear him say that. It's not surprising, you know, for him to take that approach because he's a tough dude that will mix it up. We got a bunch of guys out there on the perimeter that will, and um, you know, hopefully th th through the through the you know, the dedication that they have that, you know, that'll help us run the ball and, and create more opportunities for those guys on the perimeter. So you go through an offensive, and so do you set benchmarks of where you want to be by the time week zero comes, or how do you kind of gauge that? I kind of take it one day at a time, you know, to be honest with you. I mean, we have some vision. I have some vision of where, you know, we have a, you know, kind of a broad menu of where we want to go and what we need to get done. Um, and I think each year, each team, each day is different. So you got to have the ability to improvise and adjust. And that's certainly kind of how we go about doing it. Like, hey, man, we, we better come back and redo this again and not move forward with the next building block because we haven't mastered that, you know. And then there's a fine line between, you know, being paralyzed and not moving forward to try to be perfectionist about it. So we're, we're just kind of taking it one day at a time and, and trying to make it fit best to what, what our personnel is, what our strengths are, and what our weaknesses are. Anything else for Coach? Thank you, Thanks, Thanks.